Hello there, Des here again from GMIT Letter Frack with another of our SOLIDWORKS tutorials. Now just before we begin, if you'd like more information on the degree programs we offer in furniture design, wood technology or teacher education, then please see our Facebook or Twitter pages. So in this video we're going to run through the modelling in SOLIDWORKS of this speaker casing. So to do so, we're going to use a little bit of surface modelling, not too uh, difficult. And before we can actually achieve that, we'll set up the, the surfaces with some extruded boss bases and some sketching incorporating some construction lines. And finally, to generate this realistic looking mesh, we're going to use some extrude cuts, linear patterns, and we'll add a decal as you see here. So let's begin. Now moving over to SOLIDWORKS, we'll begin with a sketch and I want to draw a rectangle but it's going to be a center rectangle and we're going to draw that on the front plane. Let's hit the space bar and normal 2 which will allow me to look 90 degrees to the front plane and I'll start the rectangle at the origin and drag it anywhere for now. So what I want to do before I begin is draw a box around everything I see and hit for construction. Now you're going to have to tick that twice so make sure that all of those lines turned dashed, so they're construction lines. And let's dimension this top line to be 180, and this vertical line to be 50. So what I've laid out there is a construction li line grid that uh, I will wrap my proper solid lines onto. So to do that, I'm going to use this, a three-point arc. So I'm going to start at the top left corner, Go to the top right corner and drop in an arc there. Same thing at the bottom. I'm going to drop in an arc from corner to corner and then position it down a little. And the same at both sides. So let's dimension that. This top radius is going to be 2000, as will the bottom radius. And the two side radii will be 200. This is because that speaker doesn't actually have any straight or flat edges on it. It's all curved. Now, I know there seems to be a lot going on there, but remember, all of these dashed lines are effectively invisible to any feature to come. And before we go any further, let's ease that sharp corner there with a sketch fillet, radius 8 millimeters, and simply pick each of the four points. And there we have the sketch. So let's now extrude that, so features, extruded boss base, let's extrude it centrally, so change direction 1 to mid plane, and we'll set the distance to 65 millimeters. Press the green tick. So we're going to hollow this out now, so let's go to a shell feature, let's set the wall thickness to be 2.5 mil, 2.5, and let's click this front face, and the back face and then press the green tick. So you could now move over to another part and draw this inner sleeve that goes inside it which is totally fine but I'm going to draw it here using surface modeling. So to do that I need to pick all of these faces inside and turn those into a single surface. So to do that if you do not have the Surfaces tab active here, right click any of the existing tabs and make sure Surfaces is turned on. Then call up the Surfaces tab and select Knit Surface. And make your way around clicking all of the internal faces. And when you've got them all selected like that, simply press the green tick. And now what you've done is you've created a surface body. This Surface Knit 1 is a new surface that lives on the inside of this. In fact, I can go to Solid Bodies 1, right click that shell, and you can see the surface is there. It's got zero thickness, but it is a surface. So let's give it some thickness. Go to Thicken, select the surface, and I want to make sure it thickens in the way rather than out the way. So the two options here, either side, will thicken inside and outside. I want it to thicken inside to a value of 2.5 millimeters and press the green tick. Now it's important that merge result is deselected. Leave that checkbox empty just so there'll be two separate components. So now solid bodies, two of them, 
I can right click each of them and either press a, a symbol that looks like glasses or in the new version this little eye. So there I've got two separate solids. So what I'm going to do is select the thicken one, the inside piece, and hide that for a moment. And you can see both solids can be hidden and turned on and off independently of each other. And that's useful in a moment. So let's now start a sketch of a rectangle on the top plane. And I want to start there and I want to draw a rectangle that goes as far as the edge and I want to click this top line and make it for construction click this bottom line and make it for construction and let's set this side line to be a value of 58 and like I did before I'm going to put an arc from there to there but this time, rather than giving it a value, I'm going to allow it to snap onto the edge there tangentially. Same at the bottom. I'm going to pick up the corner of the rectangle there and there. And just in case it doesn't snap on, I'll deliberately miss this time. And to tell that line, that arc, I should say, to snap tangentially to that line, you hold Control, then click the arc, click the line, and over here hit Tangent. Now what that allows me to do is go to Features, Extruded Cut, and you can see it's only going one direction, so I need to change it to mid-plane and make sure it goes through the entire solid. But I don't want it to cut that material, I want it to keep that material and cut everything outside that. So let's select Flip Side to Cut. And you can see what we've done. We've extrude cut in plan the kind of curved shape there. So now while we're here, let's go to a, uh, a chamfer. It hides under the fillet command, a chamfer. Let's set the value to 2.5 millimeters and chamfer this edge in there. And press the green tick. So now I want to actually add on the mesh. So to do that, we're going to use a nice bit of surface modeling. So again, if I look at the top plane, that rests nice and centrally in the component. So I'm going to start a sketch on that top plane. I'm going to hit the space bar and look 90 degrees to it. But what I'm going to do is try and take a copy of this curve and set it back, let's say, 5 millimeters. So if I go to Convert Entities and select this front curve and press the green tick, and rotate it back around, you should see that now becomes a feature or a part or an element of that sketch. But it's on the very front face. So let's now go to Offset Entities. Let's say, in fact, we'll try 4 mil, see how it looks, and click that line. It's setting that 4 mil forward, so I'm going to go Reverse. And I'm happy with that, so press the green tick. I actually want to get rid of this original line. That was just there for construction. So click it and either delete it or press for construction just so it doesn't get in the way. And press the, uh, the close sketch. So what we're going to do now is apply a thing called an extruded surface. So if I go to surfaces, extruded surface, I can click that line and do a mid plane extrusion. And what it does is it extrudes up a line. It's got no thickness, it's got no volume, but it is a surface, a flat sheet that's going to represent the front of my speaker mesh. So I'm happy with that. Let's press the green tick on that. What I'll do for a moment is I'll click it, right click it I should say, hide it for a moment, and I want to make another surface inside this um, speaker casing. So let's go to Surfaces, knit surface and let's make another surface with all of these faces when I'm happy with that I'll press the green tick and I'm actually going to go to the solid bodies folder and hide the two solid bodies so what I have is that surface there which represents the inside of the speaker and I've got this other surface which I can right click and make visible which represents the front of the speaker mesh. 
Now I want the speaker mesh to actually indent or embed itself a little into the plastic casing. So what I'll do is I'll hide this again for a moment and I will go to offset surface. Click this one first actually. Offset surface, select this surface. In fact, it's not picking that up right, so what I should do probably is select it here from the surface bodies folder. And now it's worked. And I want that to be flipped. I want it to be offset outwards, but I just want to offset that a millimeter. And what that new outer surface represents is the ultimate size or perimeter of the speaker mesh. This surface inside is where the plastic casing ends, but this surface there is how far into the plastic casing it's going to be embedded. So let's actually hide this one. So now what I have is I've got the front surface mesh plane or, or surface there, and also at the top, the bottom, the left and the right, how far or how deep into the casing it's going to go. So I need to actually extend this flat surface. So simply go to Extend Surface. Then click the surface and go Distance. And let's just extend this 20 mil is fine. And we'll also select this edge as well. So at least the surface now is big enough. I don't need the surface to be that size, so let's go to Trim Surface. Uh, I'll clear this just to show you that the Trim tool needs to be this surface and select keep selections, I want to keep this piece in the middle. And press the green tick. I can now hide this surface and what that represents is the perfect shape of the front of the mesh. But it's got no thickness. So let's go to thicken. Uh, we'll set it to a millimeter, should be fine. So click this surface. I'll just try again there to uh, select it correctly. So thicken. Uh, we'll set it to a millimeter and rather than clicking it here I might just click it in surface bodies it's a bit more foolproof there you go it works better and I'm going to flip the direction so it actually thickens that surface back into a solid so now after all that work if I turn back on all my solids you can see what I have I've got the outer casing which is there in blue the inner casing which is there in blue and this thickened surface which actually interferes a little bit with the inner casing. If I go to the hidden details, you can see what I mean. This blue line shows that this speaker is actually embedded, the mesh I should say, is embedded into the casing a little. So if I want to cut a groove for that, what I need to do is something a little advanced. I need to go to Insert Features Move Copy. I'm going to select this speaker mesh and make sure that if I see translate rotate click it I need to see the word constraints here and make sure this copy box is checked and press the green tick it throws up an error basically saying that I've made a copy of that speaker mesh in exactly the same location as the original and over here in solid bodies I can see thicken 2 is the speaker mesh and the exact same position body move copy is another copy of it so let's right click one of them and hide it just to show you, if I right-click the other and hide it, it's disappeared. There's no groove in there. So I'll make that visible again. And what I'll do now is go to Insert, Features, Combine. I'm going to do a subtraction. The main body will be, in solid bodies, it's going to be this chamfer, as it's called. It's the inner casing. And the bodies to combine, what's going to be removed from it? Well, this body move copy the copy of the speaker mesh will be removed from it make sure subtract is ticked and press the green tick now it's cut a groove perfectly out of the casing for me and if i turn back on the feature the solid i should say there that now fits perfectly into the groove so i'm going to hide those two bodies the two outer bodies That's the one. And I want to put some holes in this speaker mesh at the front. So to do that, I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane of a circle. Let's hit spacebar and look 90 degrees to it. And I'm going to make sure I'm in line with the origin. I'm going to draw a circle there and one down at an angle. Now you can work these out yourself. 
And if you want more precise information on how to draw these um, speaker meshes, I've prepared another video and uploaded it. So I'll do a simplified version now. I'll dimension that hole to be diameter 1.5. This hole will also be diameter 1.5. And I just want to make sure that they form um, essentially an equilateral triangle between any three of them. So between two of them, I need to draw this type of rectangle. So I'm going to set that slope there to be two millimeters. I'm going to set this line to be one millimeter. And I just need to tell this, in fact, from the origin, I just need to position this. So let's tell that to be approximately 22. That'll be fine. And if I drag this, it probably will move. So let's also hold control, select the midpoint of that circle, and select the origin hit vertical. So now that I have two circles there I'm going to go to features extruded cut and let's make sure that the cut is going the right direction so I'll flip it and I've cut two little holes in the speaker mesh. So I need to pattern those. So let's go to linear pattern the direction if I try I won't actually be able to pick a correct direction so what I should do is just create a new sketch temporarily on the front plane of a center line going down and across. They'll just provide the direction in a moment for my patterns. It's just handy to do it this way. So again, go to Features, Linear Pattern. The direction, first of all, will be this line to the right. The direction 2, I'm not going to worry about just yet, but down here in Features and Faces, I want to select Cut Extrude 2. And you can see it gives a preview. The spacing will not be 50. The spacing is kind of trial and error. I'm going to set mine to 2 mil. And the number of them just needs to be enough to make sure the speaker mesh pattern covers the entire front surface. So now that I have the holes patterned across to the right, let's now activate direction 2. The direction will be this vertical line. And the distance again, this time I'm going to try maybe, um, say, 3.5 mil, I think works. And the number of them will be uh, 14. Now if I press the green tick there, it'll pattern that. It could take anything up to a minute or two to render, depending on your computer. My advice is, leave it alone for a minute or two, and it should come good. So there we have it. It took about 60 seconds to render. So what we do now is we will select the mirror command. And again, this could take a couple of seconds to load up, because it's quite a complicated component. So after about 30 seconds there, the mirror feature opened up. And what we're going to do is we're going to mirror. The mirror face plane will be the right plane. And the features to mirror will be the linear pattern. Again, it's tending to freeze my computer. But give it time, it will load up. There we have it. And press the green tick. So here we are another 60 seconds later after the um, mirror feature has rendered. Now it will rotate pretty seamlessly but if you go back in and edit any of those features it will slow the computer down again for a moment. So now let's turn back on all the solids and see what we have. So just a bit of housekeeping now, let's hide this sketch. So over here you can see sketch 5 in my case. If I right click that and press hide that disappears. I also want to hide those solids again, so right click that and hide the solid, and right click that one and hide the solid, leaving me with just the mesh. I want to put the logo, that Bose logo, onto this. So to do that, I will go to PowerPoint, which is a, a good a way to edit images, and I will go Insert Picture, and I've actually downloaded an image from the internet. And you can see it actually has a white background. Against the backdrop of this white slide in PowerPoint, it appears to be transparent. But if I drag it off to the edge, I can see the logo itself actually has a white background. So let's double click it, 
select color, set transparent color, and now if I pick anywhere in the white area, it will remove the white background, leaving a nice transparent logo. You can also double click the image, go to color, and change the color of the logo. Just to be different, I will pick the green one. And now I have a green logo with a clear background, but I must save it from here. So right click, save as picture. I'm gonna save it to my desktop, but I'm gonna change it as, or save it as a PNG file. A PNG file is able to hold the clear background. So I'm gonna call this Bose logo and press save. So moving back to SolidWorks, what I can do now is make sure my Render Tools tab is on, go to Edit Decal, browse for the decal, browse for Bose logo, and then zoom in and click a portion of the face on which to put it. Should take a moment. Now the logo comes in, it's a little hard to see at the moment because it brings in a black background. But if you select Use Decal Image Alpha Channel, now the background should be transparent. And you can resize the logo by using these drag handles to make it bigger. You can reposition it by dragging it like that, or if needs be, rotate it with this circle. So press the green tick, and you can see it's a little faint there, but the image itself on the, the speaker itself is a little faint as well. So if you want to edit this, you can go back and edit it in PowerPoint, resave the image out as a different color. In fact, if I apply a material appearance over here, let's say of plastic, and let's put in a white plastic even for the time being. That pops it out a little better. Let's try a darker color plastic. No, let's try one other kind. Let's try a yellow plastic. And you can see there, it actually pops it out a little better. But the real speaker itself actually has metal or maybe a dark plastic on it. And you don't get a true render here um, until you actually run it through the rendering software. But that's how I generated the image that you saw at the start of the tutorial. So here's the component after it's been rendered. You can see the decal doesn't really pop out unless the rendering has been applied to it. So thanks for watching. If you found that useful, remember to check out the other videos on the GMIT Letterfrack YouTube channel. Look forward to talking to you then.